funny enough, I didn't know what a triathlon was till 2019. Sounds like a legend. No, no, he is a legend. So I was looking for him for, I want to say a good month. I was trying to find him. Everything I've ever done in my life had to have a purpose. Growing up, I was always put in like in a box. Like, oh, she can't do this. Uh, she yeah. shouldn't go into that. That's like fine. a fragile sticker. Yeah, and I remember my sleep the week coming up to the race. I was just twitching and I was waking up from my twitches because of how stressed I was. I'm looking for change yeah. in a positive way. And I want to say maybe specifically it is focused on women. I think I maybe even shocked them because I didn't stop training. Yeah, I got myself back the next day, next morning. I'm like, we're going back and doing this lake swim. I want to know what happened. To all the parents in the world, do not put your kids in boxes. Let them decide what they want. Like that is something I will firmly say over and over. Hello, you guys. I hope you're well. Uh, today's guest is a perfect example to showcase that nothing is impossible. She's working towards representing UAE in the Olympics this year. And uh, she's here to share her journey with us. So yeah, let's go and meet her. Hi, Anna. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. First of all, I think I should congratulate you for your participation in the Asia Cup and the World Championship Series. Thank you. So the World Championship Series actually didn't take place in the end. Like they had to cancel the event. Oh, really? Yeah, because uh, the storm in Abu Dhabi was really bad. Oh, yeah. That was yeah. the week. Ah, oh, so, yeah. That, but that race was like the dream race because I was going to go into like the elite section with like the goats of triathlon. Oh, so no. I was really excited. But... Um, it oh, wasn't no. it wasn't our day. <laughs> okay. I think maybe there's something more waiting for you. So this was like, yeah. you know, take a break, take a like, rest. That's what I'm telling myself. Because I was really like it was that is the dream come true, like competing with that level of athletes. Yeah. It was like it's the dream. Yeah. So but it just didn't happen. Like the weather was a disaster. But yeah. I think we were all flooded. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, it wasn't, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think the fair question to start off would be was this always something that you wanted to do or become? Because it's not easy, the kind of discipline that goes into it and the kind of uh, routine that you have to put in. Yeah. So when did you realize that you wanted to be this athlete that you are? So funny enough, I didn't know what a triathlon was till 2019. I've never heard of a triathlon, never knew people did three different sports in under one discipline. Um, but pri so prior to actually discovering triathlon, I was a runner. So I was an ultra runner. I was a track runner. Um, I used to do uh, my first ever ultra marathon. I was 16. I ran 242 kilometers wow. from the Dead Sea to the Red Sea. Um, did a bunch of like ultras, a bunch of um, non-ultra races as well. And then 2019 was the year I discovered triathlon. It wasn't even me discovering triathlon. My cousin uh, Kareem kind of comes to me because I was known in my family as this like ridiculous like ridiculous like I do stu like silly stuff yeah. in their heads yeah so my cousin comes to me he's like have you ever heard of Iron Man I'm like no what's Iron Man and so we're googling it and I'm like there's no way this is real like it was like a 4k run 100 km 180 kilometer bike ride 42 kilometer run I'm like there's no way anyone does this what's this race <laughs> yeah he's like it's a it's a triathlon it's called Iron Man it's like the ultimate race and so he kind of dared not dared me we kind of had a bet that he thought I couldn't do it Okay. And <laughs> I told him I can. And then he was like, okay, fine. Two years. I was like, no, no, I'll do it in one year. <laughs> and uh, that's kind of how it started. So, and then I started training for this Iron Man. I signed up for an Iron Man in Cosima, Mexico. Uh, COVID hit a few months after, yeah. which, if anything, was a benefit for me because I was able to completely, like, my life was li literally just training. So I stayed yeah. very fit during yeah. COVID. Um, and I was in Toronto at the time. So, like, the, lockdown there was horrible it was a three-year lockdown like it was a disaster yeah but i was able to train but throughout all of this before doing that iron man i thought i signed up for a full iron man and one of my friends decides to do it with me he's like are you sure you signed up for a full i'm like yeah like here's the email like it's a full iron man cosmo race he's like Hannah, there's I, th I think you signed up for the 70.3 iron man so there's two distances okay there's the half Iron Man full Iron Man. Okay. I'm like, no, no, there's no way. Like, I signed up for the full one. Turns out Cozumel has two, because usually each country will have, like, either full Iron Man or okay. half Iron Man. Okay. It had both of them in a span of a week apart. So I, obviously, I had no idea what an Iron I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. I just signed up for this yeah. thing. And I didn't know what a 7.3 was. Like, even if I did sign up for, 
I didn't know what yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, so and then I ended up like, I'm sitting there. I'm like, there's no way. There's no way I'm doing half the distance. I've been training like a crazy person for the past nearly year. But thankfully, honestly, thankfully, it <laughs> was it was a 70.3 that I signed up for because the race kept getting pushed over and over because of COVID. And then eventually, I think it was 2021, 2021, it took place. And I had not swam whatsoever for training because yeah. Yeah, we were in was... lockdown. I remember at some point I was trying to find hacks and some guy recommended like on YouTube to use your bathtub. And for some reason, I thought that was a smart idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a tall woman, like I can't fit in the bathtub to train. And so that was, that lasted not even a millisecond. Like I sat in the, I'm like, this doesn't yeah, make sense. Does. Like how, how, how do people swim? So I literally went into this race with zero swimming. Um, I get to Mexico, I want to say two, three weeks before the race. Because in my head, I'm like, if they cancel the flights, the airport's closed, I just want to make sure. Because everything was unstable at the yes. time. Yeah. I was like, I just want to make sure I'm in Mexico. And this race happened. I lost my mind at that point. I was training for years. And the race just kept going. And like, it just kept getting postponed. Um, so I get to Mexico. I'm like, okay, I should swim train. You know, like, this is something I should be doing. I haven't done it in two years. I've never done it. Like, yeah. not even two years. But yeah. I'm swimming in the sea. I'm like, wow, this is easy. Like, why do people complain <laughs> about swimming? Turns out I was swimming, like, 200 meters. And I had no idea. In my head, uh, I, thought it, was, I okay. thought it was kilometers. Yeah, yeah. Because that's how slow I was. Yeah. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just yeah. swimming. I'm like, wow, it's not bad. Like, why do people complain <laughs> yeah. about the swim? I got to the race, and I learned I was swimming 200 meter swims. Because the swim I did was... <laughs> A three kilometer swim, I extended my swim by a kilometer and a half because uh, I just kept going the wrong direction. No. Yeah, I just I had no idea what I was doing. A fish went into my tri suit, attacked me. I had like blood coming down my neck. Dude. And I like at that point, I was swimming like a French crawl, but I was also doing, I don't know what I was doing. I was doing a bunch of different swims that I've seen in movies and whatever it was. And you were training all by yourself? All by myself, all through YouTube. Uh, all through like just googling things not recommended I wouldn't recommend it now that I know better <laughs> um, but like I, I remember I even there was a, like a safety boat some girl went and pulled down the boat because she was trying to like something happened and the boat flipped on me panic yeah she like panicked or something but the boat flipped on me and I couldn't breathe mm -hmm. and I found a rope Good. connected to the boat and I had to go through the rope hole and come out I'm like what the hell is this why do people do this stuff <laughs> And this is just the beginning part of the race. So in my head, I'm like, why do, why does anyone do this? I get to the end of the race. I have never cried so much in my entire life, but from happiness. And the second it finished, I'm like, I want to do this again. Wow. And I didn't like, looking back now, I'm like, what made me in all of this? Yeah, there was nothing to, positive was that nothing would have positive. said, no, like, you had to continue and... At all. And prior to this race as well, I was hospitalized because I got a heat stroke. Um, I was in the hospital for like two days and like they're putting like IV because it was a really bad heat stroke um, I, I couldn't stop vomiting. It was like a disaster and the doctors were like you're not you can't do this race Like it's really hot. It was how I think it was like 39 degrees. It was really hot Like it wasn't it was something I've never experienced like Mexico, right? You said? Yeah, Mexico and uh, But I still did it out of stubbornness. I'm like, I don't care if I have to crawl to the end, I will do it. Like, I've trained for this long. I was sick and tired of it. I'm like, I just want to do it. So I did it. And I actually crawled to the finish line. Um, and I've never cried so much in my entire life. And I remember my sister was there. And she calls my grandma and my dad that were here on bottom. Uh, and I was running, I think, my last, like, 500 meters or, like, last kilometer. And they were all running with me. So that, for me, it was, like, wow. it was so beautiful. Um, and I got to the finish line. And, yeah, I was, like, bawling my eyes out. And I think for a whole week, I literally felt like I was on top of the world. I was like, this is crazy. Like, like it was amazing. Um, but then from there, I kind of became obsessed with the whole triathlon world. Funny enough, like the experience wasn't a good experience. But it became very interesting to me. Yeah. So from there, I went and did... Um, so the, my first 7.3, I was the first Emirati to... Uh, youngest Emirati to ever do the 7.3. And then I saw an opportunity there as well. I was like, wait... Like, how am I the youngest one? Um, started looking into a lot of things here and went on to doing a second 70.3. Okay. And I got, I think I, was, I got second place in either GCC or the, Emir or the UAE category. It was something, I can't remember what wow. it was. 
Um, but then I was like, okay, that's interesting. And I remember the second 70.3, I didn't really train for it either. It was kind of out of the womb. I was like, I just want to do as many as I possibly can. And I remember I was here at that time, um, trying to move, like, come, I was moving back to Dubai. So, like, in that period, I was like, oh, they have a Dubai one. Let me, let me yeah, do it. Yeah. And then my whole family come and watch this one. And this one, I went with no stress. This one, I was like, I yeah, experienced the first yeah. one. Like, yeah, I was like, how bad can this one be? It was yeah. bad. Like, it was it was bad. <laughs> and were you still training alone at this point? Like... I was still training alone. But after the first time, point three, I didn't train much after it. Okay. I was just, like, it was, I don't know. I just didn't train much. I was just trying to live my life. Um, I was trying to find a job because it was also like it was it was a rocky time for anyone I guess yeah, trying yeah. to find a job or staying yeah, in a job. Yeah. But and then I did the second one, and I towards the end I felt better, like I felt stronger, even though I didn't train that much before. Um, and then I started doing smaller distances, and I started seeing that I was I'm able to actually hit decent numbers in the shorter distances, like the sprint triathlons, yeah. Olympic triathlons. Yeah. And I became obsessed. Like it was that I think that's the term I'll give it. Like I was obsessed with the sport. I didn't I love the like I love to understand how our bodies were able to actually keep like how are we capable of doing three different sports, get stronger in all three different sports? How are you using one body muscle but not the other two to get yourself through it, this race? There were so many things about it that was just very interesting to me. Um and for me, once I got like fixated on something. I want to know the beginning, I want to know the middle, I want to know the end. Yeah. So for me, I was like, how far can I go with the sport? Yeah. And I kept training, training. And then I was like, if I want to do something crazy, I need to make sure I have a group of people that are just as crazy as I am. Yeah. Um, and so my current coach was a guy I was looking for. I've heard of him so many times, even in, in, uh, in Canada. He was known as this. He was insane. The yeah. guy made the impossible possible. Like it wasn't, he did something called the UAE Man Challenge. And I can't give the specific distances, but it was something ridiculous. Like it wasn't like, I think it was like 30 kilometer swim, followed by like the Everest ev elevation of like, I can't remember, I think it was maybe 300 kilometers or something. And then went on for like a 100 kilometer run in the span of like five days or something. Sounds like a legend. No, no, he is a legend. So I was looking for him for, I want to say a good month. I was trying to find him. I'm trying to get in contact with him and a friend of mine is like i have his number like message him and at this period i already knew what i wanted to do i wanted to get qualified for the olympics um so i message him and i sent him like a whole paragraph i'm like listen like i've been trying to find you for <laughs> one uh i got your number from my friend and this is my plan i want you to coach me i get a message from him like, I, I sent him a message, maybe it was, like, I want to say maybe nine hours later. I got a message from him at, like, I think it was, I don't remember what time it was. But it was, like, meet me at 9 a.m. here. And I'm, like, crap. Like, okay, this <laughs> it's is serious. happening. Yeah. <laughs> so I go meet him, and he was on board. He was on board, and I was, like, okay, we're doing this. I was, like, okay. And he gave me, like, there was a time trial period of, like, two months, I want to say. To understand exactly where I'm at. Because yeah. prior to this, I was training by myself, doing everything by myself. I didn't know anything. Yeah. I was using a mountain bike helmet on a road bike, which yeah. is like, I don't know, was even, I don't know, I thought people just wear helmets. Yes. Like, I was yeah. that yeah. 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 naive about everything to yeah. do the triathlon. Even my biking shoes were wrong. I was using mountain biking shoes. Yeah. And I'm like, on a road. Like, it was everything I was doing was yeah. just wrong, but because I was using Google. So he basically, he turned me from, I'm not even the term amateur. He turned me from nothing yeah. to an elite athlete. Yes. And that is something I don't think people, that, that's unheard of because a lot of people train from a very young age to get to this point. You said 2019 as well. 2019. And when people ask me how long I've been doing this, I'm like, I don't think you're going to be happy with my, with my like, timeline because it's crazy. Like, it's, uh, but I literally give it all to him. Like he, We have strategized in every way possible. He's pushed me in every aspect of myself to get to where we are today. And with all of that, we were able to get qualified for the Asia Games. I was the first woman of the UAE to get Amazing. into triathlon with that. Um, and we're aiming for the, like, for the stars, yes. you know, and I believe we're going to do it. Yeah. It's, if you were to have met me two years ago, you wouldn't even, like, I'm not the same person. I don't even know who that person was anymore. And I give every win of mine to him. He believed in me from day one, pushed 
me in every angle possible to yeah. get to where we are today. Yeah. And I can't even imagine what next year is going to look like yeah. or the year after. Um, so yeah, like he made everything possible basically. And it literally took that one person to believe in me yeah. to get to me to where I am today. Yeah. Because at the time I remember it was, I'd tell some of my friends here and there, they'd laugh at me. They're like, kind of, the Olympics, man, like, what are you saying? Yeah. I'm like, why not? Why not? I told my dad, I remember, and he just fist bumped me. He's like, let's do it. And he also gave me the strategy. We sat down, he's like, listen, you want to do something that's crazy? You need to find the best in every angle. You need to find the best coach, yeah. the best physio, yeah. the best whatever, and went on. He's like, if you have the best around you, you will become the best. Yeah. So that was the strategy we built. So I found the best coach. I found the best physio. I found everything. It's a teamwork, like, right? It's a team. I found the best team. I found everything that I could possibly think of. I had to find the best of yeah. to make myself the best. Yes. So it's it's your surrounding end of the yes. day. And thankfully, we are where we are today. Uh, there's still a long way ahead. Yeah. But like, I could have never imagined me where I am today. At least you have now the base sorted. Yeah. It's very strong. They always say like, once the base is strong, you exactly. can keep building. Yeah. You know, initially, I think for you, the thing was... You were strong enough. You knew what you wanted. But the base was all rocky and you were not able to grow. It was yeah. just like, you know. But now you have a solid root that is already there. Yeah. Now it's just sky. You and can't keep. What also helped with all of this was a lot of people like, everyone has their own reason of doing certain things for whatever it is. Everything I've ever done in my life had to have a purpose. So I won't just decide like, oh, I want to climb Mount Everest for just wanting to climb Mount Everest. I yeah. need to have a real, like, rooted reason for me to actually be able to do it. Yeah. Um, I'm driven by purpose. So, like, even jobs I've had in the past, a lot of them, I couldn't even last three months, and I'm like, what am I doing? I'm just feeding into this capitalist world. There is no purpose. Yeah. I'm just a number in this company. I would end up quitting. The amount of jobs I've quit because I lost myself yeah. is because... There was no purpose behind it. I was not benefiting the world. I wasn't changing anything. I was just an added number in an organization, which is no shame in that, but like I just couldn't do it. Yeah. I thought that like I always felt there was more in, in yeah. this life. 100%. So when I wanted to do this was so initially also when I was doing all these 70.3s, the base foundation turned because the bet wasn't like what got me to the end. I forgot about it by yeah. the by the time yeah. the race happened. But um I started a charity that basically we were able to like raise i think it was one of the initiatives we got up to like thirty thousand us dollars wow for um for an amputee program in in palestine it's amazing so everything had a purpose behind it and that was something that would keep driving me to keep training and wake up and do whatever it was yeah. especially in a very uncertain time of yeah. everyone's life yes i needed to make sure that there was a reason why am i doing this yeah so why was i doing it because i was trying to raise money for um, amputee programs, for uh, refugee camps. Yes. Uh, there was also, I think, I went around 30, 300, 300 families in a camp in Jordan called uh, Jarash, what was it called? Jarash Gaza camp. And we were able to, like, we were able to rebuild the rooftops, wow. uh, give them zinc, heaters, food, coupons. And that was all based off the races. Yes. So with that, when I decided I want to do the Olympics, why did I want it? Why, why is my goal yeah. the Olympics? Why would I decide to go and not throw everything out of my life, but like close so many books in my life? Was I like, it wasn't just, there were so many reasons, but like I want a few of them would be for the generation after me. Yeah. Um, I, so I'm a dyslexic and I also have ADHD. Yes. And... Um, Growing up, I was always put in like in a box, like oh she can't do this, uh, she shouldn't yeah. go into that. That's like fine. a fragile sticker. Yeah, and telling like teachers would tell me like oh like go into like let's say there was something called B Tech in high school instead of A levels because B Tech it was much easier. Like there was no it wasn't exam based, it was very project based. Yeah. So I was always undermined and there like I was always like pushed down. This is not life. for you. This is not uh, for yeah. You. Everything was this is not for you. You you can't do this. I remember yeah. at some point I went to, like go into like psychology and the end game was that with, was like getting a PhD and same thing. It's like you know you shouldn't be doing that. Like look into this or like yeah. maybe that yeah. or yeah. So this is an one of the reasons like don't I don't want anyone to ever feel like they're in a box. And I know a few like kids 
that have dyslexia or that go through what I went through. So I, would also, I also want to show them that there is so much more. You literally could create your own life. So this was one of the reasons. Another reason is women in sports. Um, women are not, maybe specifically, I want to specifically say Arab women, yes. are not, um, we're not supported in the way men are. Which fair, I guess, for the past, like maybe there wasn't that many women athletes, not many women trying to accomplish um, the one percent of sports. Yeah. But now I think that it's because there is lack of opportunity. I yeah. don't think it's because there isn't women that could do it. I think there's a lot of women that could yeah. do it, but so many doors are closed. Yeah. So one of my main goals is to make sure I open them. Yes. So my goal is never to win any race. It's to open up a door for the next race, and then open up a door for the next race. So the Olympics, realistically, I will not win gold, nor will I be top three, nor will I be top ten. But would I be able to finish the race? For sure. So that's the door I want to open. So obviously you, you, you aim for the stars. Yes. So let's say I get gold, amazing. Yes. But looking at things in statistically and realistically, will I hit top three? No. Unless a miracle happens or like if, I try to get into the Olympics again in 10 years or whatever it is. Yeah. That's possible. But with the time period that we have, yeah. that's not possible. Yeah. What's possible is hitting a good number, um, finishing the race. And uh, that alone is an, a huge accomplishment. But opening up the doors for the women. Forever. Forever. Like, forever. That like, would be like, you know, the gates are open exactly. now. It's endless possibilities to say, somebody did it. Yeah. We can. Why not give it a try kind of uh, opportunity? Exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's time for change. And if I have the motivation and I'm like determined to do it, then why not? Why can't I do it? Let me let me try. Um, and I want I want to change the sports world. That's essentially as well one of the things. Like I want to change the sports world. There is so many opportunities here. So many people look at sports and athletes as not a full time job. It is a full time job. You cannot have a full time job and be a full time athlete. Yeah. That is simply impossible. You're either not going to be performing 100 percent at your full time job or not performing 100 percent for your um, athletic career. Yeah. Yeah. So there's also a funding scheme that I'm trying to work on. How a lot of countries, a lot of governments, whatever it is, they want results before um, sponsoring. Before or, sponsoring. Yeah. But how can someone get to that point without the so, funding? Yeah. It's, it's, it's like the chicken or the egg type of situation. Yeah. Well, was it the chicken or was it the egg? We'll never know. Yeah. But why not try a new strategy? Like I, I, I don't know any country, I think, in the world that pay athletes like it's a full-time job you have to get endorsed you have to get sponsored you have to get there's a bunch of things and it's that alone is a huge fight you know even i think even if they do it's very little to just have a meal exactly and they will give you a bed to sleep that's it but for an for a person that's not enough because he might have to support his family or he has exactly. to do something so having a funding to say you concentrate just on this we will take care of all the back logs yeah. that you have which would have been done maybe with the job will give you at least 50 or 80 percent of that saying give you 100 percent train rest leave it on us kind of a exactly and it is a job that's yes. the thing it's like it's very undermined it is a job there's so much traveling there is so much spending on let's say for a triathlon a bike you can't even imagine how expensive bikes are and how are you going to compete on a very high level you need an expensive yeah. bike you can't go and buy like a 2,000, 3,000 dirham bike. Yeah. It's going to be around 40 to 60K yeah. for a bike. Yeah. And how is someone going to afford that? So people want results before the funding, but how can the results come without the funding? So it's, that is another thing I want to change in sports. It's an athlete, being an athlete is a job. It's not, and I always get asked, they're like, oh, do you do this full time? I'm like, well, yes. What like, other ways this? How else am I meant to yeah. be doing this? Um, Anytime I'm like, maybe I should try to get a part-time job now, my schedule gets filled up with races. I'm like, and here, no part-time job. Yeah. So it's, this is a big thing as well that I want to change. It's the importance of sports. Yeah. The importance of sports within a community. Yes. It's, like it's, there is so much more to it that people don't look at. Yeah. And that's not their fault. It's just because it hasn't been put out there yeah. for them to be yeah. aware of a situation like this. Yeah. So there is a lot of, a whole bunch of reasons why I'm doing this. Essentially, I'm looking for change. Yeah in a positive way and i want to say maybe specifically it is focused on women rather than anything else um but thankfully thankfully i will say this the uae has been very supportive of me um like throughout my entire journey from day one 
they have been encouraging me to be on this path, uh, which people would think on the contrary, like an Arab country supporting women. To, no, no, I've been so blessed that I have an insane support system and I'll forever be grateful for every single person. And yeah. like everyone knows who they are that has gotten me to the point that I am here today. You know, you said one very important bit where, you know, uh, they keep asking you about your uh, length of how long you've been doing this. Yeah. And you said it's from 2019. And also, when you get into certain activities, they want you to start young. Yeah. Like, they're like, have you started this? Because they say when you start when you're five, six, seven, it gives you that kind of a thing. But also where you touched upon saying if there's no infrastructure or funding for this, how does a seven-year-old start doing this, not worrying about when he or she is 20? Exactly. They have a kind of a thing where they can depend on to make money. So that's another thing. So it's with my whole concept that I have in my head, it's creating a funding scheme, not just for people in their like post 18. It's yeah. creating a funding scheme from a very young age. Yes. And I think it's very possible to do. It's just finding the right people, finding the right group, finding the right um, investors and connections to make it happen. Yeah. Because how are stars born? Yeah. They're made at a very young age. Yes. Um, so a fellow triathlete, her name is Afra. She is 12 years old right now. And this girl will bring back a gold medal for the UAE. I guarantee that. Wow. But how is she going to do that? She needs, also, she needs support. Yeah. I'm not sure if she is getting support or not. But from what I know, in a global stance, it is so hard for anyone to get that yeah. financial support. Yeah. And it's so important. Because this girl, when I tell you, she will get a gold medal back for this country. Yeah. And it's no doubt. And yeah. not just in like the Asia Cup or the World Cups or whatever. She will get it in the Olympics. Yeah. And she's an insane athlete. And she's only 12. So in my head, I'm like, she's also someone I want to make sure brings back this medal for the UAE. But how's that going to happen? She's not going to be able to do, pull up the fight that I'm yeah. trying to do. Yeah. She's 12. Yeah. So I want to open up these doors for her. You know, while the world is busy sponsoring 40-year-old men yeah. like Messi's and the Cristiano Ronaldo's, Look at you're the, giving yeah. them millions and billions yeah. where they have nothing more to achieve. They're done with their career. But what is the next generation? Exactly. And that's Put the, the money. One. That's the important one because she, when I say she's, she's an insane swimmer, an insane cyclist, and she's a very good runner. But how is she going to get to the next level? That's the question. Yeah. You need funding. It yes. cannot be assumed that someone's able to afford yeah. doing something. Yeah. The bike maintenance alone yeah. is thousands of dirhams. Yeah. Travel, thousands of dirhams. Hotels, yeah. thousands of dirhams. Yeah. How is that possible? Yeah. It cannot be assumed the family will do it. Yeah. It should be assumed that if you're representing a country, the country will support you. Yeah. So, but then again, it's not, it's not a UAE thing. It's yeah. a global thing. Yeah. And... It takes one country to create a whole domino effect. Yeah. So what if the UAE is the first country to look at athletes as this is a full-time job, we're going to give them a salary. Yeah. That creates a domino effect. Yeah. This creates more opportunity, brings in more athletes. Yeah. Um, because one of the main reasons, there isn't, there's a lot of pro athletes out there in the world, but there isn't even remotely close to how much there would be if this funding scheme works. Yeah. Because majority of the time, like I've competed with insane people in the UAE they're not professionals, yeah. but they hit probably better numbers than they, they than the Tokyo 2020 triathlon numbers. And I've always wondered, I'm like, why why haven't they gone to that level? Yeah. It's because they need funding. Yeah. How are they meant to have this as a full-time job, have kids, pay for everything, but get no money? Like they, they need it. It's yeah. it's a well-rounded, just like it's it starts up with creating a company that with a whole bunch of investors. I'm still in the like strategy part yeah, of it, but like yeah. it's basically essentially getting around ten to fifteen people, and um, getting them as investors with, let's say, around fifteen to twenty athletes starting off there, letting them get results because we've given them the funding, and obviously there'd be a scheme. Like it's like you don't do this for the next two years, you're out. Your contract has closed. Yeah. So it's creating something that's tangible and something that's realistic and long term. Yeah. That is going to create a huge shift in the region. Yeah. Um. And that was that's one of the main things. I want to build the credibility within my my like with my credentials of being in the Asia Games. Inshallah going into the Olympics. Yeah. Inshallah doing the Asia Games again. Yes. Inshallah doing like world games. All these ways to build a form of credibility yeah. to be able to do all of this. Yeah. So 
basically i'm doing it for change i'm doing it for there's something there's something so much so beautiful about sports yes. and i don't want it to go away yeah so if i need to bust myself for it and fight for god knows how long i will do it because then the next generation will have it and it, it will be the most beautiful thing ever that's something so, so beautiful <laughs> i remember when i met you the first time and we were talking about this you know of inviting you to the podcast yeah and you were just talking about everything was about bringing in change like you know that was the first thing i was like yeah. listening to you saying that i'm doing this because 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 it was never like i'm doing this for me no i got nothing out of it essentially like it's if i was doing it solely for myself i would have stopped ages ago yeah like i've had so many bad experiences in so many races and just in all around in, this, in sports like it's it's you get it's more cons than there are pros so i would have stopped ages ago like it wouldn't have it wouldn't have been you can't be driven by something that's very monetary kind of intrinsic like yeah. it has to be something that's very extrinsic yes so that's essentially what it is yeah like if i could ask you like you know you are so strong you are positive you approach everything <laughs> with so much you know stubbornness yes, that you know uh, yes. <laughs> but with that how do you mentally keep yourself together because what little i've seen yeah. from your routine is discipline 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 from waking up to 4 a.m or maybe earlier to going to bed oh, no, at no, 7 p.m no we don't do earlier than 4 <laughs> okay thank you no really. no i i say no <laughs> i sleep <laughs> because remember now we are sitting here and i'm shooting the podcast for the first time at in the daytime yeah because you go to bed at 7 p.m yeah i go like i'm in bed by like i'm sleeping by 9 So how do you uh put all of this together and still mentally keep yourself in a level check? So you think that I want a level check? It's uh it's it's uh, one of the it's honestly the hard like being an like an athlete is not easy. And it does take a huge mental toll, especially when you like bust your like your tired self of being to train and do whatever and not get the results that you hope for. and it's not because you can't do it it's there's external circumstances yeah. that happen um for example humidity for me yeah. is not something i could train uh, like i could race in yeah. but sometimes you just don't know till you get there yeah. till you get to the race yeah. place uh so then your results are obviously not a reflection of your training yeah so then it gets to you mentally like yeah. it's like i i want to say specifically i think the biggest biggest like i want i don't even know what term to give it downfall yeah uh was after the asia games so that race was something we were working towards me and my coach for a while and um we went like i went in the training camps and like in the alps in the summer i went and did i got knows how many races in the yeah. summer like i had i haven't had an off season since i started but no such thing as off season for yeah. me um so off season is basically when like i think it's like a good month or two months where athletes just are not training yeah for like they take their time off and usually it's like december or depending where you are in the world but like yeah. or the season yeah but most of the time it's like from the beginning of december to like mid january or beginning of january so yeah. you have like a decent like okay. month and a half i don't have that because i have a very short um window to train yeah a very yeah. short window and i don't have time yeah. so it's i've been on on season for a very long time so after the asia games like after knowing how much we put in the amount of travel i think i was on maybe i want to say eight planes in the span of like a, a short period as well because i had to go from one place to another place to another place for a training camp to another race i even went to a race in saudi i was there for 24 hours came back here and i'm literally like i'm done i can't i can't i had a race two weeks after Shit. um i think last year i don't know how many races i did i did a lot of races there were some back to back um like i'd have on saturday and then on sunday um we put in everything you could yeah. possibly think of um and then i got to china and it was the first in the huge race that i've done so like the asia games like i'm sure you know like it's it's a olympic affiliated yeah. race it's it's insane it's a yeah. huge opportunity it's basically the olympic experience it's giving you a glimpse of what to exactly. expect exactly yeah. and i got there and it was the most beautiful place ever and it was so hot even though we thought it was going to be cold that was the forecast it was meant to be cold yeah. but not cold cold is like yeah. dubai cold um so we were all told to get like like we are hoodies or like cardigans you didn't need any of that it was really hot very humid and as the race was building up 
I started freaking out. I'm like, oh crap, like, crap, crap. And I, I like, I messaged yeah. my coach. I'm like, okay. And I'm like giving him my strategies about 10 million things. He's like, kind of, he sent me, he would send me a Zoom link and he'd like calm me down. He's like, let's breathe. Let's just breathe in, breathe out. Get to, where are you? Where are you? I was in a cafe. He's like, get a coffee. Let's just sit and chat. And he was trying to not talk about the race yeah. because I was literally, I was crazy. I was like, but this and then, then there was this corner. And then he was like, kind of, calm down. It's a normal race. Yeah. It's just the name. Forget the name. Yeah. And, then, but, and like he tried to drift the conversation. I wasn't even listening to him. I'm like, but listen, there was also this elevation that was in this corner. He's like, Hannah, calm down. And um, it was actually crazy. Like I, I remember my sleep the week coming up to the race. I was just twitching and I was waking up from my twitches because of how stressed I was. And two days before the race, I fell off my bike. And till now, I actually have the scar. Like I have like a big scar here. And I was like, oh my God, that's I'm not, the race is going to be horrible. Like I have bruises everywhere. <laughs> and I get into the race. And I had never, until this point, experienced a panic attack. I had no idea what on earth was happening to me. I went into the seat and my body just literally just froze. I'm like, what's going on? I'm like, what's going on? And I kind of keep pushing and I couldn't see in front of me. At that point, I don't know whether it was my goggles or the lake was black or I just couldn't see anymore. The lake was not black. It was green and my goggles were fine. I couldn't see. Like I was like, my blood sugar levels dropped. And I see a boat next to me. I'm like, what the hell is this boat? I'm like, is everything okay? I'm like, okay, crap. <laughs> Eventually, I got out of the sea. I was yellow. Like, there was a video of me that was coming out. I was completely yellow. I couldn't die. I was just seeing black dots. I'm trying to find my bike. And at this point, I was the last one. Maybe not the last one. No, I think I was the last one that came out of the lake. I'm like, where's my helmet? And I'm trying to, like, put it in. I was not okay. I, I couldn't, like... I got on my bike, and it was six laps. I was able to make it to my last lap before getting laughed. So I pushed myself and I was like, I want to say a good decent amount of minutes away from the first group that went out. And I got laughed, I'm like, there is no way, there is no way. So getting laughed is basically getting disqualified. Yeah. I'm like, there's no way, there's no way. And I remember sitting on the floor and I was like crying, crying, crying. Boogers are coming out of my nose. And the sports manager, Hassan was there and he's like, yeah, get up. And he was like trying to throw like cold water on me for me to laugh. And I'm like, I said it's good. It's all. I was like, I was very dramatic as well. Like I, was, I think I was like, I was literally like in a, like a, I was a Turkish show. Like I, that was like <laughs> the scene I gave. Um, and I just didn't want to talk to anyone for like a good 24 hours. Like it was just my, and my like everyone knew something happened yeah. because my swim was not remotely close yeah. to. I think I finished in 33 minutes, and I was like, that's as if I've never swam like in my life basically. Um, so they knew something was up, but they also knew to give me some some space because it was the first. Yeah. It was huge, like for me, like I literally, my head, I'm like, it's game over. I was doubting. I'm like, I don't even want to do this anymore. Like, I don't think I want to. Like, what's the point? Like, I like I'm. A, I, I was very negative towards myself. I'm like, I'm a joke. I'm an embarrassment. Like, I did all of this and whatever. I'm like, I'm, like it was very self uh, negative self talk. And um, my coach messages me. He's like. And I just hope you understand you literally just made history. And I still didn't register that. I was like, and I messaged him. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I embarrassed you. He's like, I don't know what. I was just thinking even more of him yeah. and everyone that has been supporting me more yeah. than myself. Yeah. Because my instant thought, the first thought I did was, I embarrassed my coach. Yeah. Because it's like, the amount, like, I can't even express to you how much we worked for. And it just, it just didn't work out. Like, it just didn't work out, and it happens. And I learned that the extremely hard way. Sometimes things happen, and you have to be okay with it. It was the first time I was put under that much pressure in the yeah. sense of, like, media and cameras and, like, the, the way they announced my name. My face was, like, I yeah. could see myself while I was walking. I'm like, what the hell's going on? Like, it was, it was, yeah. I've, I have never been put under this form of media pressure. Yeah. So there was so much happening. I'm like, oh, like this is so weird. I come back to Dubai. I'm like, Hannah, you cannot cry. This is fine. You're you're gonna be fine. The second I see one of my coaches, he's like, Hannah. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I couldn't stop crying. <laughs> I couldn't stop crying to my coach Alessia. I couldn't stop crying to my coach Melina. My coach Joel. Just crying. I was just, I was yeah. like, I'd be swimming and crying. 
but I think I maybe even shocked them because I didn't stop training. Yeah. I got myself back the next day, next morning. I'm like, we're going back and doing this leg swim. I want to know what happened. And I did a good, decent number and I wasn't pushing that hard either. I'm like, what the hell happened? Yeah. So it got to me very, like, it really got to me for a good two months. I couldn't perform in my races. I didn't want to race. Yeah. Um, Joao, my coach, was like, he was pushing me. He's like, Hannah, just keep going. Just keep yeah. going. He's like, we've mastered your, your body. Yeah. We've mastered your body. And we can't train more. You, yeah. you cannot train more. Yeah. Your load cannot exceed this. Yeah. But what we can do is now train your mind. Yeah. So from that moment on, I had a sports psychologist and a sports life coach, and we trained my mind. So I went in back. So the Asia Cup, this one was actually putting aside anything. It was the biggest testament to all the mental work we've been working on. And I went in for the first time in an elite race. I wasn't stressed. I did not. I wasn't overthinking. I wasn't. I was just waiting for the race to happen. And I finished the race, and then it hit me, and I couldn't stop crying from happiness. I'm like, yeah. I said, my coach, I'm like, Joanna, I did the race. And I was crying. I'm like, no laughing, no disqualification. And he's like, yeah, you, honey, yes. you could do it. Like, yeah. I'm telling you, you could do yeah. it. I'm like, yeah, I could. It's happening. And within all this period, like, I also proved to myself in a lot of other races, like, getting the types of podiums I was getting and stuff, and the improvements in my numbers. I'm like, okay, it was literally that. It was just that day that I couldn't perform. And... It takes a huge, and no one, re I don't think a lot of people talk about it, but like, I was so sad for so long. I didn't feel like myself. I was so, sh like, I became sh not shy, but like, I just felt embarrassed. Yeah, you go back into a shell, like, right? Go back in the shell, but it's literally because of like the people I was around, like my coaches and like my coach, Joao, the amount of meetings he's had with me as I was just crying. Like, <laughs> um, I remember one of them, I was like, listen. I think we aim for LA 2028, not Paris. He looks at me, he's like, why? <laughs> this was after the Asia Games. I'm like, because I, like, you saw what happened. Like, it's like, he's like, no, Hannah, <laughs> we aim for Paris. I'm like, but, but what happened? He's like, this happened. I'm like, but that. <laughs> he's like, no. <laughs> I was like, okay, fine. Like, I, I'm like, I guess it is what it is. Like, we keep going. And that was like the first crying meeting. He had like another 17 of them. Uh, <laughs> but here we are. Yeah. You know, here we are. And this yeah. is where I mean, like, it's so important to surround yourself by, by people like this. Yeah. That he literally, like, he was my eyes when I couldn't see. He was my backbone when I couldn't sound. He, yeah. he was my ears when I couldn't hear. Like, he, he was basically making me move without me even moving. Yeah. Type of thing. And um, it's, it's, Things happen and you can't control them. Yeah. And something my my life coach tells me she's a control the controllable. So that's something I keep telling myself. Prior to the Asia Cup in Malaysia, so many things were just going wrong. I'm like, you know something? What am I gonna do now? I guess let me let me just go. And I went and it worked out. So it's like my philosophy now. I'm like control the controllables. Things you can't control. Why am I stressing about? And I'm a person that could get very anxious because I like order. Yeah. Yeah, and when it's not in order, like it's like I'm in, in limbo. So it's 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 a journey, but like you go through a lot of downs. Yeah, and I think that's basic. I think that's where the character is built, though, because if Asia didn't, games didn't happen, I wouldn't be the person I am today. Yeah, and I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to get back out there. I'm ready to put myself out there, and I'll keep doing so. It took that one bad experience for I think my whole mind. To change yeah physically i was ready yeah. i was never not ready yeah but it was i wasn't mentally ready and you, you can't tell if someone isn't mentally ready till they're put in a situation where the true colors have surfaced yeah so clearly i wasn't ready yeah. for the mentally ready for the type of pressure and also there was a lot of things i had to learn in the mental aspect of an athlete because there it's one thing that's the race but it's also another thing the pre-race, yeah. how are you going in? It affects your body a lot. If you're going through something in your life, in your personal life, it affects your performance. So it, for to your question, how do I maintain that? Yeah. I don't. <laughs> it is, it is, uh, it fluctuates. And it fluctuates to extremes. It's not even like, oh, we, yeah. no, it fluctuates to extremes. 
And that also, I think, proves a point that, again, it's a team effort. It's a team effort. Like, triathlon is an individual sport, but it takes a village to get... To Keeping get you to... mentally in check from time to time, yeah. at least, because you had the right people to make sure that they told you the right things when you were just sinking. Yeah. Rather than letting you sink, you had hands pulling you up saying, listen... They didn't let me go. Like, and my coach, like, Coach Joao saw it in my face, like, I was defeated. I was, I was, I couldn't, I wasn't laughing. I couldn't smile. I'm a very, like, I describe myself as like a SpongeBob. So like, I was just not, I didn't want to be in training. I didn't want to train. I didn't want to swim. I didn't want to run. I didn't want to race. I didn't want to do anything. I was questioning my, my entire goal. I was questioning everything. And he just kept reminding me. He's like, Hannah, it was one day. Yeah. The amount of times this happens to athletes uncountable yeah. you've, you've started this journey not that long ago yeah. they have started this probably at the age of 15 yeah. and if you were to ask or talk to any professional athletes from the age of 15 how many times did they get disqualified yeah. how many times did something bad happen yeah. they'll give you at least a dozen times yeah. for you your journey started late so yes you got this late but it's okay like this is this you have to accept it you have to strategize after it it's not the problem it's the solution yeah. If it's a problem that has no solution, then it's not a problem. Yeah. Because a problem only has a solution. So in that sense, comes control the controllable. Yeah. If there is no solution to the problem, let it go. Yeah. If there is a solution, find a solution and do it. True. Um. So that's the philosophy. That is something. But like, it's. I've never understood how the. I think it was Tokyo 2020 where a girl pulled out of the Olympics. Because of her mental health. I never understood that. Till the Asia Games. Mm. You could you, like you get smacked left, right, centered. From the top, from the bottom. And you can't see beyond it. Yeah. Your mental health can just sink. Yeah. And I didn't understand it till that period. Yeah. Because I'm like, how does someone... Like, sports is good for the mind. Like, how is your mental health bad because of sports? Yeah. But I understand that. Um... But yeah, so to your question again, there is no yeah. control. It's you yeah. take it day by day. Whatever is coming towards you, you deal with it then. Yeah. And the discipline that's 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 where it turned into a habit. So I don't do four AM wake up calls, I refuse. <laughs> I like my seven AM wake up calls, if they're possible. Yeah. But um I'd say it's because of my team. Like one of my one of my um athlete colleagues I want to say is that, is that the term colleagues uh Tonya she <laughs> she would like we plan like we make deals it's like okay Wednesday we have track we make a deal I will be on track like I'm a woman of my word yeah, so yeah. I agree I'm gonna do something yeah. I'll say I'll do it yeah so she really holds me accountable yeah. to my timings as well like even this morning she was uh, we were meant to meet at 6 30 I was 15 minutes late I told her I'm like I'm 15 minutes late but I will be there. Typically, if I was training with myself, um, I'll go whenever I want to yeah. go. Like, but then that's like it disrupts your entire day because then you have other trainings. It turns into a mess. Yeah. But Tony holds me accountable a lot, and my coach. Like, he'll send me a message like two minutes before like a training. He's like, "Are you here?" I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah just a few minutes late. <laughs> few minutes late. Start, start." <laughs> um, but yeah, it takes it takes a it takes a village. Yeah. Doing it alone is I wouldn't recommend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think the last thing I would want to ask you is, what would you want to say to the little ones out there, the girls and the boys or the parents yeah. that, you know, uh, if somebody wants to get into being an athlete or getting into being something that, you know, uh, they feel is not possible, what would you want to tell them? How do you s start or, you know, yeah. begin this journey of, you know, becoming? Well, beginning the journey, I would say just start. There is no, like I said, my journey using Google. Um, and I would also say, no, I don't use Google. Like, but do start. If you need to use Google, use yeah. it. Um, but don't underestimate yourself. There is, there is a quote I, I follow, not follow, like I always think of when a good thing happens, is uh, the underdog has more bite than a football, which is very true. Someone that has talent could go only so far, but someone that's hardworking yeah. will surpass the talent yeah. and that is that is proven over and over and over because yeah. um, someone that's not talented and goes into a sport they have a lot more to prove so what do they need to do they need to train a lot more 
yeah. they have a mentality that they know that they are not the best but how do they become the best they have to fight 10 times more they have to train so much more they need to do things that the talent wouldn't be doing they wouldn't be following the talent's path they, they'd be making their own path um and with that comes a lot of uh, positives things that the talent would be lazy at so at some point the talent had become lazy and the underdogs become those pit bulls and then you look at the, the underdogs and assume that they've always been talented yeah. but the reality is it's the talent that got lazy and it's the underdog that kept fighting yeah so and i think anyone could do anything it's not it literally just takes training and if there's something i could show the world is i didn't come from a pro background but here i am on on the elite path here i am aiming for the olympics why am i different to anyone else or not yeah. i just decided i want something why i wanted it how am i going to get it and made it happen and continue to keep making it happen yeah. so it's a conscious decision every day because uh, i want to say 70 percent of the time i wake up in the morning i'm like i don't want to train now yeah yeah People think they're like, oh, but you enjoy it so much. I'm like, yeah, I love it once it's done. Yeah. Like I was thinking, <laughs> yeah. But in the moment, like I'd say running is the only thing I get excited about. Yeah. And swimming now. Yeah. But like cycling, I'm like, it's like, because it's also hours. You're just like, I know it's going to be like a three hour ride, you know, and you're just sitting in this yeah. bicycle and you're like paddling. Yeah. So I don't look forward to that, but like, it's a choice. Yeah. So I tell every parent and every kid, if you want something and want it bad enough, what's going to stop you yeah. if let's say it's that you need financial support for it find a way there are so many sources let's say if you're in the uae there are so many types of funding schemes that people could apply for um maybe not per se for in the athlete field yeah. but there's also ways of getting investors maybe yeah. family members maybe uh, friends or companies that believe in you or believe in your vision it's talking to some schools maybe talking to some universities um there is a will there is a way it's very simple like yeah. it's it may be hard will be hard but if you really want something yeah then never use the excuse of like oh i'm just not talented because yeah. that's not an excuse if you really want something you could get it like i'm not talented in swimming biking or running i would say i'm from all three my background is running so i am best at that yeah but i'm no talent and nor like there's so many like let's say there's beth potter she's one of the most well-known triathletes she was not a born talent either she be she's her background was running she was not a swimmer. She became a professional athlete that got into, into the Olympics and is still competing on an extremely high level. Oh. She is holding the ranking of number one in the entire world. Wow. She does not have a background. She was a school teacher. She had no background in swimming, no background in cycling. She wanted to do something. Here she is. So there are so many examples you could give in that in the professional like league yeah. where they've had backgrounds of they, they weren't good whatsoever yeah. in the sport, yeah. but they became good. Because yeah. of consistency, yeah. because of solution-based thinking, um, and driven by a purpose, uh, driven by something that is much bigger and much bigger than themselves. Yeah. So that's essentially what it takes. So if a child or anyone, frankly, obviously there's certain limitations. Like let's say you're 80 years old yeah. and you want to do it. It's like, okay, yeah. there's biology that plays yes. a role. Yeah don't be 80 years old thinking that you're going to run a 5k in 10 minutes like yeah. that's not um so it's also being realistic yeah um so looking at like science-backed research about yeah. certain things before deciding to do something yeah. but essentially anyone could do anything yeah. so it's finding a way to do it like it's yeah. uh and to all the parents in the world do not put your kids in boxes let them decide what they want like that is something i will firmly say over and over your kid is not living the parent's life. The kid's living its life. So it's a reminder. Like it's They want to go and become a professional football player. Maybe they will. Why not? So it's... Uh, That's the most important thing, I yeah. think. So, Hannah, thank you so much <laughs> for taking the time, sharing a little bit of your journey, but the most important part of your journey thank you. today. <laughs> And I know from what I've seen and heard, like, you know, you are here to bring so much change. And I know I'm that's hoping, going to yeah. be happening because your first trait is stubbornness. And <laughs> you got a lot of stubborn people. <laughs> you are going to make it happen. Yeah. So I only wish you all the best. Thank you so much. And I am looking forward to having you here maybe after a couple of months or after a year to hear <laughs> all that happened within that time. 
Stay tuned. Stay tuned, I know. <laughs> All the very best for your uh, journey towards the Olympics. I know that is in the radar and yeah. it's going to be happening inshallah. and we are all here going to be cheering you <laughs> inshallah inshallah so thank you so much for taking the time thank you so much for taking the time as well it was amazing i really appreciate this talking to you <laughs> thanks a lot thank you